Hello friends, it's The Stitches. Today I just want to take us on a short stroll down memory lane. When I first discovered Lolita Fashion in 2008, there was a small indie brand called Sweet Rococo. Unfortunately, they do not exist anymore. However, thanks to the miracle that is Internet Archive, there does still exist a small imprint, a whisper of their presence on the internet. This brand was very special to me for several reasons, so I just want to talk about them for a little bit and share what I felt made them really special. Sweet Rococo opened as an online-only Western indie brand in 2007, and not terribly long afterwards they were actually featured in the English language Gothic and Lolita Bibles for their winter 2009 edition. The whole concept of the brand revolved around complete customization. The website's design wizard allowed you to choose the cut, the fabric, even the laces and the ribbons were completely customizable, and each dress was even custom sized to fit the wearer. Another kind of neat aspect of the brand is that the fabrics they used were imported from Japanese wholesalers, and many of the prints that they had were actually used by Japanese brands. The GL the interview directly references Ma'am, Chocolate Chip Cookie, even Angelic Pretty, so you knew the fabrics would be amazing quality. Although personally, I was never actually able to buy anything on my high schooler budget. And then unfortunately, the brand did close in 2013. After closing, Sweet Rococo opened up an Etsy shop where they would sell off the remainder of their fabrics, most of which actually appears to have been bought up by a kimono specialist named Tangerine Mountain. But back in 2009, when I was really getting into the Lita fashion personally, I would use the design wizard on Sweet Rococo constantly. I sort of treated it almost like a dress up game. I just thought the process of designing dresses on there was really fun. Unfortunately, the design wizard itself hasn't been preserved particularly well, but let's go ahead and look at the bits of the website that do still exist. So this is the site as it exists today. We have a short explanation of what happened to the brand. And then when you scroll down a little bit, we have a slideshow of different designs that were made by customers. If we click on the Etsy link, it still pulls up the shop, but there aren't any listings and the shop announcement just sends you to Tangerine Mountain. So let's head over to Internet Archive. Luckily, there are lots of bookmarks for us to choose from. The coding on some of the earlier entries has been lost to time. So we have this very 90s looking web page. It sort of almost appears like it's half finished, but I can assure you the original website did not look like this. But you can still see some of the designs and fabrics. Just looking at some of these line drawings is very nostalgic for me. By the time we get to around 2009 in our entries, some of the background image is still visible, although it should be pretty obvious that the original website did look much cleaner than this, as again, most of the formatting has been lost. Here we can see some more dresses that were designed by customers, and you can see that even down to like the ribbons and the buttons that the waist ties were attached with are completely customizable you were actually able to buy some of the designs that other customers had created if you really liked it. I actually saw one of this particular design available on Depop once. This page appears to be as close as we get to a functioning design wizard page. But as you can see, it just doesn't really work anymore. My original plan for this video was to use the design wizard to make a few dresses with you guys and just show you how that process worked. But alas, the coding and layout has been lost to time, so I can only reminisce in my memories of it, as the site is just no longer functional enough. If anything, this serves as a reminder of how important it is to preserve these little bits of internet history. Saving stuff like this, making recordings, and then putting them up on third-party video websites 
websites like YouTube and Vimeo and bookmarking sites that you really love very thoroughly on Internet Archive, not just the homepage, but like other parts of the website as well, as well as donating to archive sites so that they can keep running is just super important for preserving internet history. I really loved Sweet Rococo because it made the idea of designing a dress really accessible and it gave me so many ideas for how I could make my own dresses even if I wasn't ordering from them directly. Just the idea of taking any bodice you want and attaching any skirt you want kind of inspired me to start Frankensteining commercial patterns together, which is kind of how I got into clothing design in the first place. So this has been a short stroll down memory lane. For those of you who were also in the Lolita fashion community around this time, or even any other alternative fashion community, I really am curious to know what some of your favorite indie brands were. I know In the Starlight was one that was really popular. They were a deeply beloved Western brand that went out of business, but I do believe that they're back now. Another one that I really enjoyed because they posted really interesting photo sets online was Glooms, and they do still exist. They're still running, still going strong. And with that, I hope everyone has a good day, and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye! Thank you.